Page 18, Arkansas Traveler. Let's look it over. About a page and a half long. It has a DC Alfini, so it's a little longer than that. Treble and bass clef, one sharp in the key signature. When the key of G major, make sure you can do the G major scale. Four, four time signature. We have a pickup beat. We're coming in on beat four, huh? There should be another measure with three beats in it. And if you look at the top of page 19, at the end of the first line where the fine is, that's the last measure of the piece. It's got three beats in it. So we're fine. Now the second section starts with the second line, because this is in two sections. And it has a pickup beat. But if you look at the bottom, page 19, that measure also has three counts in it. So we're still good. Well, it's okay. Let's check the notes and fingering and all, right? Hand, you're here. Here. You gotta move around a bit, that's okay. One and two. Second finger down here. No big deal. Really, we seem to be in this position, pretty much. Uh, top of page 19 is 3 1. Again, we take advantage of the repeated notes to change hand position because we need to come up here. And now, so it's here and then thumb. And then one. Don't forget the F sharp. It's in the key signature. And that is just a G major scale going down. So if you're doing the G major scale like you're supposed to, when you run across this thing in music, you just play it. It just happens. You don't have to worry about it. And then second line. Eighth notes. Look out. One and two. Rest. Now. The technique I use for playing piano is called a weight distribution method. It's not the only technique out there, but it's the one that I learned in college that did me the most good. So that's the one that I use. It's the one that I teach if I teach technique. And that is I'm simply transferring weight. The weight is pushing the nose down and I'm just transferring weight from whichever finger I want it to be on. So in the second line here, I'm just transferring weight from each of these fingers and I'm just lowering the finger. I'm just kind of walking on the piano here. Just, and you can transfer weight from any finger to any finger and very quickly. You can also transfer it to multiple fingers. So this works very well and it helps to stay relaxed. You're not still just using the fingers. Working the fingers like that, you can have some real medical problems if you try and do that on today's pianos. You know, I don't recommend it. Yes, Those all have to be even and smooth. And to get them even and smooth, I would use the same technique that I used in the scales. That is, play it slowly, uh, accent, and drop the wrist on the accent. So first you do every note very slow here. I'm accenting and dropping the wrist on every accent. The weight's pushing the note down, and then I speed it up maybe every two notes. And I accent every other note and drop the wrist on the accent. Here, and then eventually you can speed it up maybe every four notes. As you gradually speed it up, stay relaxed. If you can keep this wrist moving, you'll, you can stay relaxed. Don't tense up. Anyway, let's go on. Third line here. Can you do it again. Okay, last line you're here. Yeah, one beat rest to come up here. That's all right, just come up here. If it will help you, you can play that A with thumb. So just scratch up a little bit. So this way you're closer to the G you want to be. If you have that on. Here. It's up to you. You can use thumb on that A or just second finger and come up. You have a rest. If you didn't have the rest, you had to be there immediately, then I would tell you use thumb on the A because that way you're right there. And you end up with a G major scale, okay. Left hand, well, G in the It's going to be exciting in the left hand. Page 19, starting with the second line, you have a rest to come up here, just quarter notes. And again, I'm just walking on the piano, just transferring weight from finger to finger here. That's all. OK. 
they put their hands together. And again, I hesitate all over the place. I don't care. I just want to know when the fingers go down together. So it's here, these. That's what I'm after. So on page 19 in the second line up here, here, and here, and here, these, and these, and these. And you just work it out very slowly and carefully, the hands working together, and then you go back through it a few hundred times or whatever and slowly work out the hesitations. So the beat is a steady beat. You can keep it slow, it's got to be a steady beat. Now, once you have that, then I think about the articulation. You know, staccatos, I'm flexing at the wrist on the staccato. And when you're slow, staccatos like this, I put my hand on the key and I bounce off each time. I put it back on the key before I do the next one. I don't hit it from above. I only do that when it goes fast, and when I have to do that, it's a very small motion. It's not a big motion. So here, and then you got some slurs over on page 19. You just connect them and lift up between each slur. Okay, actually they're kind of phrases, aren't they? Let's look at the third line on page 19. You're here. Lift up, lift up. It's like taking a breath. The left hand on these quarter notes, I suggest you go ahead and connect them. Keep it simple. But technically speaking, you do anything you want. There's nothing marked. I could separate them if I wanted to. But, but that last one is melody. So you have to treat it like melody. Connect. Then lift up. I could disconnect them, or I could connect them. It's interpretation. It's up to you. Maybe one time you play it one way and another time you play it another. Maybe you, you play it different. Uh, like the, the second and the first half of the third line, that line and a half, maybe you disconnect it. it from now on. That provides some variety, some contrast in there. So these are different ways of interpreting the music. Then once I have an idea of the articulation, then I go in and put in the dynamics. It applies to the melody and most of that's the right hand. Mezzo forte, moderately loud these, keep them in the background. Playing these soft, very light, very light, and then a little more weight on the right hand. When you get second line on page 19, this is loud. Well, that causes a problem because when you're playing loud, generally we use more muscle. And when you start using more muscle like that, you'll start tensing up a little bit, and then the muscles don't want to move, and you can't play fast. So you can't do that. You, you'll, 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 You'll tense up and freeze more or less. So you gotta stay relaxed. All I'm doing is using weight. I just use more weight is all it is. See, I could play it very lightly. Just very little weight. Very little weight, or a lot of weight does that. I'm just adjusting at how much weight I'm using. That's all it is. Left hand, soft. Now you're not going to stay at exactly the same level all through that. So at like the beginning on the mezzo forte, you can come down a little bit and up a little bit as you finally get into the music. You, you know it now. You're not worried about the mechanics. You know, you know what the notes and rhythms are. And you get into the music, then you can, if you feel it, play it as you feel it. Yeah. See there in the second line, second measure on page 18. I 
tend to come down there. Get a little softer and then take off again. It might come down at the end. There. Toward that. Get that little soft. I felt it that way, so I played it that way. And the same thing going on, except that you're just a little louder, is all. Maybe in the third line, I come down a little bit. Now back up. You know, so you can adjust these dynamics a little bit. It's okay. You just get into it, start feeling the music. That's interpreting. And the speed, well, moderately fast, or fast, moderate, however you want to look at it. It's the feel of it. How fast can you play the second line on page 19? Or the third line or any of that. How fast you can play that accurately? I wouldn't, you know, don't go faster than that. Accuracy, in my opinion, is far more important than speed. Now, you can't find recordings of this, and you'll find it at all kinds of speeds. And some people just go lickety split. Others will play it slower. You gotta do your thing, don't copy somebody else. As far as the roadmap goes, there's a DC Alfini at the bottom of page 19. DC, remember, go back to the beginning. Alfini is at the top of page 19 and the thin and thick bar lines, that's the symbol for the end of the piece. You just do that much again, if you would like, because this is a kind of a quick piece. We can adjust the fingering to help us out a little bit. You don't have to, but we can at the end of page 19, the last measure, you're coming down the G major scale. And you go back to the beginning, you got to come down here. Thumb again. It's rather awkward. So to prepare for that, what we can do is in third finger, use fourth. And then on second finger. This way our thumb is ready when we go back to the beginning. So the last two measures at the bottom of page 19, you're here, four, and then you're ready. And that makes it a little easier there. See, sometimes we can adjust the fingering. Now, if it's not a real fast piece, you don't have to worry about it. You got time to come down here. I still wouldn't recommend it, but I think a four is better there. There's a note at the bottom of page six or 18, excuse me, where if you want, when you have these whole notes, the G and the B together, if you'd like to add a C sharp to it. Depends on what mood you're in or how much you'd like to annoy people around you, it's up to you. I suggest you keep it really, really, really soft though. This song. I have not had enough coffee to listen to that, so be careful if you're going to use that. Huh? You might get yelled at on that one. Now remember the natural accents one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because it should be clear to the listener that first note is a pickup beat. Otherwise, they're going to think the first note's the first beat of the measure. Well, of course, the left hand helps, but it should be to here. One, two, three, four, one. If you have to exaggerate them, especially on page 19 on the eighth note, second line, it's here. Exaggerate them if you have to. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You want to feel it, but it, if you have to at the beginning, you even in the run, going down, exaggerate them. It's important that you feel those. Let's play this together very slowly and double check all the notes and rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics and do both hands about the same. 
We will do the DC Alfini. I'll give us three counts. And let's just go real, real slow here. One and ready and go and four and. And four and. One. 